Hey guys, so we are on project number two for preserving that abundance of tomatoes we're getting this year. Nothing like you, Mr. CB and Renee, but we're getting quite a bit over here. So we want to preserve them. And now we are going to make some tomato sauce, the kind of sauce you want to put on your spaghetti and your ziti and lasagna and all that good kind of stuff. So first things first, just like that nice fresh tomato basil soup that we made, we're going ahead, we're coring, de-seeding our tomatoes. So we've got all our cores and all our seeds, and this is just some of them because I actually did some of these earlier and did more now to finish up because we went out and did a whole nother harvest. We got a big colander full today and brought them in, which is when we saw those parasitic wasps on those horn worms out there. If you guys want to check that out, that was pretty cool to see. But I'm going ahead and just like I did with that soup, I'm leaving the skins on my tomatoes. A lot of people like to take the skins off. You can go ahead and go through that process too if you want. I'm choosing to leave them on. We're going to puree these anyway, so it's going to get those skins down nice and fine, so you're not going to get big chunks of it in your sauce unless you're the type that likes those chunky sauces. I like a nice smooth sauce. And plus, just like most fleshy vegetables and fruits, most of your nutrients lie in the skin and we want to make sure we're getting those good vitamins with whatever we're eating, especially when we're having pasta for dinner. Once you've got your tomatoes all cut up and everything, and you really don't have to cut these up that small depending on what you're going to use, you can go ahead and start adding them into your blender or your food processor, whatever you have. Okay, so once you've got your tomatoes all pureed up, you can see you can't even tell that the skins were in there. It totally got rid of those skins. And now we're going to go ahead and bring this up to a nice low boil. We've got a big pot here. Okay guys, once your tomatoes are at that nice boil, you're going to keep your heat down pretty low. You don't want it boiling over or splash, splashing too much. And now it is time for the patience game. Lots and lots of patience because we're going to keep boiling this and cooking it and cooking it and cooking it for hours and come in every once in a while and give it a stir because foam like this is going to start to build up all over the top and you can see it's been leaving residue on the side of the pot that you're going to want to scrape down in there and the goal is is that this is going to cook down so you're going to lose more and more content we're probably going to boil this down until it's maybe about half of what we have here because all that water is going to boil out of it and you're going to keep stirring you're going to see it start to get more and more towards a soft consistency so i pulled this off the stove at probably around 9 30 last night which means that it was at a boil for probably between about three three and a half hours or so and you can now see the difference in the amount of sauce that's actually in there it definitely went down by probably a little bit more than half so it's a really nice thick sauce right now. It will thin down a little bit more when it heats up. It's still cold. I just pulled this out of the fridge and put it back on the heat. I'm going to let that start heating up a little bit. And once you're at this point, this is the time for you to get creative. It's whatever you like in your sauce. Some people like a spicier sauce. Some people like a more savory sauce. Some people like a very herby type sauce with lots of basil and that kind of thing. So I'm going to test it out and I'm going to do a little combination. I'll show, I'll show you what I've got, got over a here. beautiful plate of fixins to go in our sauce. I chopped up one and a half small onions as fine as I could get them. My husband likes a really smooth spaghetti sauce so I'm trying to keep it that way the best that I can. And then I've got one whole bulb of nice garden garlic from my dad's garden over there. Thank you very much. And knowing me, I'm going to taste it, but I probably will end up adding more garlic than that. And then I just went out to our herb garden and picked a bunch of nice fresh herbs. I've got a bunch of oregano, just a few chives because I'd like to get to use them, but we do have all the onion too, so we don't want to make it too oniony. And then I've got some thyme. I've got some basil, which was nice because the basil was trying to flower, so I had to pull those tops anyway, so it's perfect timing. 
and then just a little bit of parsley there. And I'm gonna go ahead and get these herbs washed up and cut and get my garlic all cut up. So now I've washed and moderately chopped up all my herbs and garlic and things like this. And now again, this is where it's your choice. If you like a sauce that has some nice chunks in it and that kind of thing and you're gonna get pieces of your green and pieces of your garlic, go ahead and chop it up to the size that you want and throw it right in your sauce. My husband and I like a smoother sauce but still with a nice bold flavor. So what I'm gonna do, I've put in two good spoonfuls from my sauce into my food processor just to give my food processor something to grab onto. And I'm gonna go ahead and add all those ingredients I was just showing you in there with it. And I'm just going to process this down just a bit to get this really nice and fine and mixed into the sauce. You're getting that really nice flavor, but I'm not getting the big chunks of things in there with it. In there with it, I'm going to add just a few red pepper flakes too. Especially because my husband likes it spicy. He likes everything spicy. that mixture back into the rest of my sauce. I'm going to take a spatula and make sure to get in there really good. Make sure I don't lose anything. I'm also going to add all my onion. I'll give this a good stir. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add just a bay leaf or two, a couple little pieces. And I'm going to add just a hint of black pepper. And I am going to add a very, very small amount of pink Himalayan sea salt. And then again, we're going to stir it all together. And then I'm going to let this cook for just a little while and come and stir it every once in a while and really let my flavors mix and settle together before I taste it. And then we'll adjust it to how we like it. Okay guys, so this has been heating together for probably about 10 minutes or so. Now give this a try. See how it came out so far. Yeah, I'm happy with that. I'm very happy with that. I think that if I was to do anything, I think I'd want to add a little bit more garlic to that. And a little bit, I like a lot of garlic though. The garlic's already pretty strong. Maybe a little bit more garlic and I think some more oregano and I think it will be perfect. So this is great guys. Like I said, experiment. Do what tastes good for you. What you like a lot of. Now we could go ahead and can this but lately, the past couple years, the health restrictions if you want to call it, things like that, safety rules about canning tomatoes has changed a little bit recently. They're saying more to go with the pressure canner, even if you are adding lemon juice and things like that. And it's all very controversial. So just to make this easier, and I don't mind doing it. This is what I always did as a kid. It comes out great. It still tastes just as good when you go ahead and put it on your soup. I am going to go ahead and I'm going to put this into little portion containers for the amount that me and my husband typically use for a meal. It'll be perfect because you can pull out what you need for making pizzas, all that good kind of stuff. And I'm going to go ahead and store this right in the freezer. So this is really, really nice. But this is very exciting, guys. I'm very happy about this. So definitely give this a try, guys. It's honestly, it's time consuming, but it is easy. So definitely go ahead. A great way to use your surplus of tomatoes. Or even go ahead and pick up one of those sales on tomatoes at the store and make some good old-fashioned homemade tomato sauce and enjoy it guys i love you all thank you so much for joining me on this stay healthy stay safe enjoy the rest of your day and god bless Bye bye